In this presentation we're going to have a quick look at uh, working with probability distributions with Octave and this also really, a lot of this counts to uh, MATLAB as well. There are two classes, this is an important thing to know, there are two classes of probability distribution. There's the discrete probability distribution family which are usually count variables where you're counting something and the outcomes are integers. Although the characteristics of the uh, dis the uh, discrete probability distributions don't have to be integers, they can be real numbers. The other t family is the continuous family of distributions, for example, the normal distribution, the exponential distribution, and so on. And these are usually measurement variables, and the outcomes are real numbers. So, uh, let's have a look at the couple of things we're going to be looking at here. Now the quantiles is the number that we expect a specified proportion of the numbers of a probability distribution to be less than. Now it's more informative for uh, continuous uh, variables. It's not really particularly informative for dis um, discrete random variables. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of go into a bit more detail about what these mean when I come up to some examples. But essentially these are the three main families of functions. There's also the probability density function uh, commonly known just by its the middle word there, density, are also actually known as the PDF, and it's the likelihood of a variable having a particular value. And this is usually more informative for discrete uh, variables. Uh, so, for for example, the probability density function is essentially the probability of a particular value for discrete random variables. There's also the cumulative distribution function, that would be known by uh, commonly known by the, just the word distribution, but also by the initials CDF, and that is the probability of being less than or equal to a specified value. So I'm going to look at two distributions in particular, just as quick examples. Um, the first distribution I'm going to look at is the Poisson distribution, and in a minute, and it, the reason is that it's a discrete distribution. Now, each distribution has its own particular uh, a set of uh, parameter values, uh, way it's uh, constructing the uh, distribution. The one for the Poisson distribution is called lambda, which is called the rate parameter, and uh, the Poisson rate parameter, but it's also the pro uh, Poisson mean. Um, so uh, that is the stem of the functions are called uh, P-O-I-S-S, the first few letters of Poisson. So here are the functions here. Now, quantiles are, you have the, the stem that gives the name of the distribution, and then I-N-V, and that means inverse. That's related to the fact that the quantile is an inverse of the uh, cumulative distribution function. Okay, so there's also the PDF, the probability density function. Uh, so we have POS, then PDF, and also POS and CDF. Okay, let's look at that in Octave now. I'll just bring up Octave here. So that's Octave. So uh, pos, we're going to let lambda, we're going to let lambda equal to 4. No particular reason, I just chopped, uh, picked that out of the top of my head. So uh, first off, POS inverse so in this case we have to uh, input a probability or a, per a proportion value uh, and not point nine zero then I'm going to let lambda equal to four okay and it's going to give an output a se a seven so essentially there's ninety percent chance that uh, Given the uh, lambda equal to four, there's a seven uh, ninety percent chance that the values would be less than seven. Now, the thing about the Poisson distribution is that's not particularly informative answer. I just done it there just to show uh, that it could be done. What I'm going to do now, though, uh, is to go and look at the help file here. Poisson inverse. This just gives us a bit more details about uh, what we're doing here, and it just gives us this the uh, the structure there. So. Uh, pos inverse x just the the input and lambda and just to, tells us a few other things there about what we can do so I'm going to clear the screen now, we'll just do the other ones here uh, pos uh, pdf of uh, let's say 6 when lambda is equal to 4 
it's 0 0.10420 so about 10% so that's the probability probability of x equal to 6 given that lambda equals 4 in the Poisson distribution just do another one there actually you don't have to write in fully the uh, um, the lambda equals as long as it's in the right place so I'm going to do 8 here so uh, th there's a 0.2977 percent uh, probability that x is equal to 8 given that the Poisson distribution has lambda equal to 4 now so we're going to do the cumulative distribution here this is the probability of x less than or equal to 8 and it's 97 percent almost 98 percent scale that back down to 6 oops and it is now 0.88933 uh, that's the probability of x less than or equal to 6 given that lambda is equal to 4 Right, that is the Poisson distribution. That's a quick look at the Poisson distribution and how we would use it. Now I'm just going to quickly go back to the slides here and look at the uh, counterpart in the continuous uh, distribution family. So uh, the, we're going to look at the normal distribution and the parameters are M and S. Uh, mean and standard deviation and there's default settings so if you don't specify anything the mean is zero the standard deviation is one now the stem here is norm so we'd have norm inverse norm inv norm pdf and norm cdf now if you leave uh the leave the default settings what you have is this the standard normal distribution which is a special type of normal distribution i won't get that into that too much here because it's sort of it's a plenty of uh, material to be dealing with in another presentation so norm of inverse of uh, 0.95 i won't put in any uh means or standard deviations yet uh, 1.6449. You might uh, spot that that is j just slightly shy of 1.645. I'll do another one actually. Uh, 0.975, and you might spot that that is equal to 1.96. Now, if you're doing any uh, any work with confidence intervals or hypothesis testing, those two numbers there would be quite familiar. Now, let's just say uh, I put in uh, mean equals 100 and standard deviation equals let's say 20. Oh, sorry, s equals 20. So in that case, the uh, the upper bound, or the sorry, the the uh, quantile for 97.5 percent when mean is 100 and standard deviation is 20. In that case, uh, the 97.5 percent quant, 97.5 uh, percent quantile is 139.20. Uh, let's look at the PDF and the uh, PDF and the CDF, the distribution function and the density function, or density function and distribution function. Now, as I said previously, these are more useful for uh, discrete random variables. They're not particularly informative for uh, uh, continuous distributions. Uh, the reason for that is sort of beyond the scope of this video. So m equals, let's say, we'll we make that 4, and standard deviation equal to two okay so not point one two zero nine nine it's essentially that gives you the height of a density curve but again that's outside the uh, uh, purpose of this video we can also look at the uh, this is the uh, cumulative density function this is more of a useful the cumulative de uh, sorry cumulative distribution function is usually more are more useful in the context of uh, continuous random variables is the probability of x less than or equal to 2 when m is equal to 4 and standard deviation is 2 or the mean is 4 and standard deviation is 2 uh, okay let's do that for 6 there we go 0 0.84139 so the probability of x less than or equal to 6 when the mean is 4 and standard deviation is 2 now you could do, uh, I've just done Poisson and normal distribution because just to sort of have one of each, but you could ha do it for um, other uh, distributions, for example the beta distribution, uh, let's go clear the screen there, you can, uh, you can uh, look up the, uh, I'll just do it for beta inverse, this is a particular uh, distribution. So essentially this gives you the uh, name of the parameters here, A and B, for the beta distribution. 
Uh, but essentially, where you go from this now, if you, there's other types of distribution, where you go from this is you go to the help files. And you can find quite a lot of details on the help function, but you, uh, to find out more about the particular distributions themselves, you just have to um, uh, search elsewhere and just learn about the distributions uh, using other fac uh, facilities. Alright, that ends our presentation. It's pretty long.